Hi, it's Katrina. The sunken city. Researchers discovered a strange group of pyramid-like structures off the coast of Cuba. These structures were found at the bottom of the ocean, identified using sonar equipment. They appear to be megaliths, things that would normally be found at a site on land like Stonehenge or Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. These structures are roughly 1,200 feet long and 120 feet high. They've been estimated at 6,000 years old. They don't look like anything ever found in Cuba and are more reminiscent of the pyramids and temples in Belize or Mexico. This discovery should have been international news when it was made just a couple of years ago. But ever since it was first mentioned, it hasn't come up again. There is much debate as to whether this find was even real, even though the structures look very clear. No teams have gone underwater to check out the mysterious sunken city, and no mainstream archaeologists will even talk about it. This has led some to speculate that the ancient city could change history, and that for some reason, the discovery is being suppressed. On the other hand, it could be nothing more than natural geological formations. They certainly look like pyramids, temples, and other buildings, but there is a chance they are just rocks, and their shapes are coincidental. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The USS Jacob Jones In 2022, divers uncovered the USS Jacob Jones, a U.S. Navy destroyer which was annihilated by an enemy submarine over 100 years ago in 1917. It's famous for being the first American destroyer ever lost in combat. It was divers from the British Sub Aqua Club who uncovered its remains while searching for mysterious wrecks along the coastline of the UK. The USS Jacob Jones had originally been hit by a German torpedo during World War I. It was an early prototype for the destroyer class, which is currently the backbone of the U.S. Navy. The wreckage was found 40 miles from the southwest tip of the U.K., submerged 377 feet underwater. But before it was destroyed, the ship was a force to be reckoned with. It had four 4-inch four guns, eight 533mm torpedo tubes, and a pair of steam turbines delivering 17,000 shaft horsepower. After America entered into World War I, the USS Jacob Jones was given convoy duty. Its main task was to deliver troops and supplies from North America to Europe to fight against the Germans. During her brief career, she rescued hundreds of Allied merchantmen who had been left stranded by enemy activity. But then, on the night of December 6, 1917, she was hit by a torpedo. 64 crew members died, and the ship was lost until just recently. Mysterious Holes Explorers have discovered some extremely unusual holes on the ocean floor. They have been called alien holes, and no one has any idea who made them or what purpose they serve. The holes are perfectly aligned, looking like they were purposely punched into the sea floor 1.6 miles beneath the surface. They were uncovered by a crew with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration as they explored a vast section of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This is part of the largest mountain range in the world and a place that hasn't been investigated too much in the past. Well, let's get back to the holes. They are extremely bizarre, and some say they were clearly made by some intelligent life form. The holes are perfectly straight, and as you may know, Mother Nature doesn't typically work in straight lines. She also doesn't work with repeating distances, but each hole is the exact same distance from the last. They appear to have been measured and placed with great care, and each one is surrounded by a small mound of sediment. But this is where things get even weirder. The same phenomenon was spotted in 2004 by the U.S. National Marine Fishery Service. They found a very similar pattern of holes and couldn't figure out what had made them. It doesn't look like it was an organism because scientists have never seen a creature make something like this before. Researchers and scientists across the world are stumped. Some have theorized the holes could have been made by cracks in the sea floor. Some say escaping gas, and some have even suggested it was an underwater vehicle searching for treasure. And then, of course, there are the stranger theories. Some say the holes are evidence of alien activity, leftover marks from whatever the aliens were doing in secret at the bottom of the ocean. Dino Track Texas is historically hot and dry. Amid the great drought happening right now, the Paluxy River in the Dinosaur Valley State Park has lost most of its water. The river dried up completely in some locations. 
but according to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, the vanishing water revealed prehistoric dinosaur tracks from 113 million years ago. Under normal conditions, the tracks would have been totally submerged and filled with mucky sediment. Nobody ever would have found them. But now that the river is dry and the sediment has blown away in the wind, the tracks have been revealed as if they were left only yesterday. Paleontologists say the dinosaur footprints were left behind by an Acrocanthosaurus. This was a beastly carnivore that stood 15 feet tall and weighed roughly 7 tons. It was one of the most terrifying dinosaurs to ever roam prehistoric Texas, feasting on anything that moved. It's shout out time! Want to say a big thank you to Robert Nolan and Crohn's Warrior for supporting this channel. If you are new here, welcome! And be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family! The World's Deepest Shipwreck the deepest shipwreck in the world has just been found in an impossible depth in the Philippines. The ship is a U.S. destroyer that sank in World War II. It was found at a dizzying depth of 4 miles below the surface, or approximately 22,916 feet. That's a little over half as deep as the Mariana Trench. To give you an idea of just how insanely deep the ship was, only about 2% of the oceans are deeper than 23,000 feet. The ship is called the USS Samuel B. Roberts, or Sammy B. for short. The Navy confirmed its discovery in a statement in June of 2022, although it was a company from the UK that made the discovery. Former Naval Commander Victor Vescovo and the team with EOS Expeditions found the ship broken in half at the bottom of the ocean. Sammy B. was commissioned in 1944 and sunk the same year by Japanese naval forces during the brutal Battle of Samar. The American naval force was heavily outnumbered by the Japanese, and yet they successfully defended against a major attack. The Sami B even damaged the superior Japanese fleet, which consisted of four huge battleships, six heavy cruisers, 11 destroyers, and the most heavily armed battleship ever constructed, the Yamato. But although the Sami B fought bravely, it took a hard hit from the Yamato and went down taking 89 brave soldiers with it. The 120 soldiers who survived were forced to cling to scraps of the wreckage for nearly 50 hours before they were rescued. Huge Hydrothermal Vents Deep in the Pacific Ocean, scientists have discovered a series of hydrothermal vents. These vents are positively huge, covering an area about the size of a football field. They look like craggy underwater chimneys, rocky towers about 40 feet tall each. To make them even more chimney-like, the hydrothermal vents spew out black, smoky water that can reach temperatures of up to 694 degrees Fahrenheit. That water is so hot it would burn the flesh right off your bones. You wouldn't even be able to get near this thing because it would be like standing in the mouth of a volcano when it erupted. Scientists believe the water is even hotter inside the vent possibly 818 degrees Fahrenheit, before it shoots out of the formation. But it's not the hydrothermal vents themselves that are so scary. Researchers from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in Massachusetts say the extremely hot temperature of the water suggests something terrifying. A volcanic eruption could be on the horizon, probably in the next few years. The newly discovered field of hydrothermal vents is about 200 miles from the coast of Mexico in the Pacific Ocean. The field is also part of the East Pacific Rise, a group of potentially world-destroying volcanoes extending from California to Antarctica. The vents are so hot, it suggests that something deep beneath the ground is happening, perhaps an accumulation of energy that will lead to a biblical-sized volcanic eruption. If this chain of volcanoes starts going off, it could, theoretically, bring about the end of humanity. The Head of Hercules Archaeologists have just discovered the head of Hercules. It wasn't a real human skull, but a stone head that belonged to a statue of one of history's most famous mythical heroes. It was discovered in a Roman shipwreck that sank near the Greek island Antikythera, located in the southern Aegean Sea. It went down in the first part of the first century BC. But this was hardly the first discovery made at the site. This shipwreck was initially found 100 years ago. Researchers have already brought an unbelievable wealth of treasure to the surface. 
But it was only recently that researchers began finding even more artifacts. They realized that an earthquake had occurred sometime after the ship sank, causing huge boulders to tumble onto the wreckage. Only once a team started removing the boulders did they find even more treasure. They had to use underwater lifting equipment, pressurized airbags, and all the ingenuity they had to move the boulders. Some of them weighed nearly 10 tons. But with the huge rocks removed, they found more artifacts, the most stunning being Hercules' preserved marble head, the gummy squirrel. A strange creature was recently found down in the depths of a deep sea abyss. Researchers are calling it a gummy squirrel, and they say it looks like a moldy, half-peeled banana. Scientists with the Natural History Museum in London found a menagerie of bizarre marine life in the Pacific Ocean. Among their discoveries were dozens of creatures that might be species totally unknown to science. In the summer of 2018, a remotely operated vehicle was sent to search through an abyss 16,400 feet beneath the surface. The abyss is located somewhere between Hawaii and Mexico and contains all manner of odd monsters. The team managed to recover 55 specimens, with 39 of them appearing to be totally new species. According to biologist Guadalupe Bribiesca Contreras, the last group to explore the area was 150 years ago on the HMS Challenger. Since then, this part of the ocean has barely been touched. It's no surprise they found so many wacky new animals. The so-called gummy squirrel appears to be a type of sea cucumber shaped like a banana. It was nearly two feet long, about the size of a child's arm. They also found a new kind of sea sponge that looks exactly like an underwater tulip. Unfortunately, the team didn't find any gigantic monsters, no new species of shark or terrifying fish with fangs. But this is a dark and mysterious part of the ocean, a place so deep there is no light and very little nutrition. It's possible that with additional expeditions, researchers will find even more bizarre creatures. Spanish Stonehenge In summer of 2022, a severe drought revealed something unbelievable in Spain. In 1963, the prehistoric site of what archaeologists nicknamed the Spanish Stonehenge was flooded. The government needed to create a new reservoir as part of a civil engineering project. And so, one of the most impressive archaeological marvels in all of Spain was flooded and gone. It remained submerged until now. The site was originally found in 1926 by the German archaeologist Hugo Obermeier. He was able to help identify the prehistoric circle as being 7,000 years old. It's an ancient megalith even older than Stonehenge, consisting of 100 standing stones. Nobody knows if the monument was used for ritualistic activity, if it was an extravagant tomb for a prehistoric chief, or if it was built to commemorate some great event. What we do know is that Europe is in its worst drought in 500 years, and the reservoir is nearly empty. With the water gone, the monument has been revealed once again. Sadly, the prehistoric site has taken a beating by being underwater for so long. Most of these stones have fallen over and shattered, and once the water in the reservoir rises again and the stones are submerged once more, it will probably be damaged even further. Ancient Greek Shipwreck Researchers with the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology recently announced the discovery of a shipwreck filled to the brim with treasure from the Ptolemaic era over 2,000 years ago. It was found in the Bay of Abu Kir, off the coast of Alexandria in Egypt. It's believed that the ship likely sank after it was hit by giant blocks of stone when the Temple of Amun was destroyed. Frank Gaudio, the president of the IEASM, says the temple was ruined during a major natural disaster in the 2nd century BC. As the temple crumbled to pieces, one of those pieces fell onto the ship, which had been moored in a canal right beside it. The ship then sank, was covered in blocks of rubble, and remained hidden for about 2,200 years. The blocks pinned the wreck to the bottom of the canal, and it was slowly covered over by about 15 feet of sediment. The Greek shipwreck isn't the only thing sitting at the bottom of the Bay of Abu Kir. The bay was once the home of a great port city named Heraklion. 
Researchers believe this was the very city where Cleopatra had her temple in the days before Egypt was taken over by the Romans. Something happened in the second century, perhaps a tsunami caused by an earthquake. Whatever it was, the entire city of Heraklion tumbled into the water. Ships, temples, and city streets were suddenly submerged. Haunted Maya Underworld A team of specialists in Mexico recently discovered some human bones at the bottom of an ancient sinkhole or cenote. These specialists are underwater archaeologists, professionals who put on scuba suits and descend into the darkest depths of Mexico's haunted cenotes in search of lost history and sometimes the remains of human sacrifices. A cenote is an underwater cave full of water where often the ceiling has caved in, creating a natural underwater well sometimes open to the sky. Now they are popular places to swim in the jungle, but back when the Maya ruled Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, sinkholes were sacred spaces, viewed as entrances to the underworld. Archaeologist Bradley Russell and his team spent two weeks poking through the mud at the bottom of the cenote. The only way to get there was by rappelling down 40 feet deep into the earth. That's a little deeper than the height of a telephone pole. They went sliding down among huge stalactites on the ceiling and then dropped into the water below. Located just outside the ruins of Mayapan, near the modern city of Medina, this area was a major political center for the Maya between 1150 and 1450. There were at least 17,000 residents, with this city safe behind tall stone walls. Dr. Russell believes it was the leaders of Mayapan who built their city next to the natural cenote on purpose. They then used the sacred place to offer up souls to the gods by sacrificing people and dropping them into the underworld. So far, the team has identified 10 skulls in this chamber alone, with more likely waiting to be discovered among the rocks and sediments. The Dried Mermaid off the coast of the Japanese island of Shikoku, a fisherman allegedly captured a mermaid sometime between 1736 and 1741. This mermaid was a creature very much unlike the Western image of mermaids. It's a part human, part fish, part monkey mixture called a ningiyo. In Japanese folklore, it was said that if you could catch one of these horrifying mermaids and eat its flesh, you could gain immortality. There's even a story about one of these creatures appearing to the legendary Prince Shotoku in the 7th century at Lake Biwa, near Kyoto. According to legend, the mermaid asked the prince to build a temple to display its disturbing remains as a way to remind people about how important life is. According to legend, he had once been an ordinary fisherman, but he was caught fishing in sacred waters, and he got transformed into the freakish creature. Interestingly enough, the shrine is real. It's the Tenshu Kaiosha Shrine, currently guarded by Shinto priests. Inside the shrine are the mummified remains of the mermaid that Prince Shotoku encountered 1,400 years ago. And yes, it really has been there for that long. Scientists aren't allowed to touch it, so we don't really know what the creature is, although most experts believe it was probably bits and pieces of different animals sewn together to look like a monster. Mystery Tracks the Great Blue Hole in Belize, according to legend, contains a terrifying monster. This monster is said to date all the way back to the Maya, who told stories about the mysterious beast and how it prowled deep in the bottomless depths of the Blue Hole. The Great Blue Hole is essentially the mother of all sinkholes. It's an enormous underwater sinkhole off the coast of Belize that is so deep it's hard to believe. The Great Blue Hole is a limestone cave system. And before it was drowned by the melting of the polar ice caps 14,000 years ago, it used to be on dry land. Now the Blue Hole is a very famous diving spot, but it is very dangerous. It's believed to have the highest diving fatalities in the world, with an estimated death of 130 to 200 divers in recent years. In December 2018, a team of specialists went to the bottom of the hole in a small submarine. 410 feet down, they came across the unimaginable. There, on the sand at the very bottom of this mysterious hole in the ocean, they found tracks. Researchers didn't immediately know if it was some kind of gargantuan underwater beast or if it was something a little less supernatural. They were shocked to find any sign of life at all down in that dead place. After a while, scientists found the answer. According to the chief submarine pilot on the expedition, Erica Bergman, 
the tracks were actually left by conches. It's pretty common for conches to fall over the edge of the blue hole, and since they can't climb up such steep walls, they eventually suffocate. They wander around for a bit and then die from asphyxiation. It's because at the bottom of the largest sinkhole in the world, there is no oxygen at all. It's an anoxic environment, meaning there's no way to breathe. There are no life forms down here because they have no oxygen, which was why the tracks were so shocking in the first place. Creepy Shipwreck There is an ancient shipwreck located in the Mediterranean off the coast of Israel. Of course, there are hundreds of shipwrecks, even thousands in the Mediterranean Sea. But this one has come under the scrutiny of students at the University of Haifa. It's called the Ma'agan Mikhail B shipwreck, and it's full of artifacts, and also skeletons of rats. 1,400 years ago, the ship crashed into the sand and sank about 230 feet off the coast, landing at a pretty shallow depth of only 10 feet. Because it was so close to the shore, it ended up being mostly covered in sand. This left the ship in an excellent state of preservation. Its timbers, the mast step, and its cargo are all very well preserved. Turns out that the largest maritime cargo load of Byzantine ceramics was found inside this ship. Alongside the jugs and bowls, the researchers also found evidence of walnuts from Turkey and the famous ancient fish sauce called garum. But archaeologists also found something a little strange. They discovered the preserved skeletons of rats. Many experts believe it was rats traveling from place to place on ships just like this one that caused the Black Death in the 14th century. These may not have been carrying that disease, but they were almost definitely a nuisance to the crew. And there were a lot of them! There were almost no other biological remains discovered except for hundreds of rat bones. According to what the researchers told Business Insider, that makes this the oldest evidence of a rat infestation on a ship in the Mediterranean. Disturbing, but a fascinating historical first. Sharkano NASA has documented something very scary under the water. They found proof not of a Sharknado, but of a Sharkano. In the deep water off the coast of the Solomon Islands, there lies the Kavachi Volcano. An expedition in 2015 dubbed it the Sharkano after they found sharks actually living inside the volcano. And just recently, NASA captured satellite images of it erupting. A Sharkano eruption! Not only can NASA see into space, but they can also see into our oceans. They use the Earth Observatory's Operation Land Imager 2 to see inside the volcano as it blew its top. A huge plume of discolored water, a great rumble through the nearby islands, but no sharks flying through the air. The sharks don't actually stick around when the volcano erupts, which it does pretty frequently. Instead, they live inside of it when it's calm because they like the heat. The volcano is about 65 feet under the surface of the ocean, and when it's not busy shaking the earth and creating small, ephemeral islands from its eruptions, sharks can be seen swimming around in its open top. Scientists have been watching them since 2015, and to be fair, these sharks are pretty clever. They can feel when the volcano is about to unleash some serious fury, and they swim somewhere else until things calm down. Then they move back into the volcano where the water is toasty warm. These sharks are basically lounging in their own underwater hot tub. It's shout out time! Big thank you to Cypher76 and Shakia for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. HMS Erebus Artifacts Underwater archaeologists with Parks Canada discovered over 350 artifacts during their latest investigation of the HMS Erebus. This ship sank off the coast of Nunavut in the middle of the 19th century during one of the biggest expedition disasters in British history. The famed Captain John Franklin led the expedition in search of the Northwest Passage, but everything seemed to go wrong. The team got stuck in the Arctic, the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus were frozen in ice, and the explorers had to try and make it back to civilization on foot. None of them made it, with all of them dying from a mixture of starvation, exposure to the elements, and even cannibalism. Both ships were discovered between 2014 and 2016 by Canadian archaeologists in the snow and under the ice in the water. But it was just recently that the team could finally get inside the HMS Erebus and start pulling artifacts out. 
It took them three weeks between August and September, with over 93 dives being made at about 110 hours underwater altogether. They found mostly personal items, things like a hairbrush, a lieutenant's uniform, ceramic dishes, wine bottles, navigational instruments, a jar of mustard, and even an accordion. The Underwater Tomb About 7,000 years ago, a group of indigenous people living in what is now Florida decided to use a shallow pond as a burial site. Archaeologists say these people sank the bodies to the bottom of the water, then marked the burials with wooden stakes. The sticks would have poked out of the shallow pond. All these years later, the shoreline has moved quite a bit. The pond was originally way up the shore, about 9 feet above sea level. But as of June 2016, it was 20 feet beneath the surface. That little pond has become part of the ocean. And so, when divers from Tampa were hunting for fossils, they accidentally came upon a human jawbone. Since the first bone was found, more excavations have been done looking for the rest of the bodies. Experts have now uncovered the burial stakes, which were entirely covered by sediment. They also found more graves, with many of the corpses in relatively good condition, thanks to the peat they'd been buried in. Instead of their bones decaying and being eaten by sea creatures, they remained somewhat preserved. Self-destructive octopus colonies A team of scientists was looking at a rocky patch of terrain at the bottom of the ocean when they saw something remarkable. 100 miles from the coast of Costa Rica, on a section of the seafloor about 2 miles beneath the surface, the scientists found a colony of octopuses. These octopuses were living on a rocky outcrop of hardened lava, put there by an underwater volcano. But that's not the weirdest part of the discovery. According to the Field Museum's Janet Voigt, who helped use these submersible vehicles to explore the rocky outcrop, the octopuses shouldn't even have been there. They had not expected to find octopuses here, since these creatures almost always live in cold water. The thing about an octopus is that its metabolism requires more oxygen than what can be found in warm water. It was like finding a group of penguins on a tropical beach. Still, that's not even the creepiest part. The weirdest thing was that the octopuses were almost all mothers. Each one was guarding her very own clutch of eggs. And this is where things get disturbing. Scientists observed the octopus mothers in extreme states of stress. None of their eggs were even developing, and the octopuses were freaking out because of the warm water. Basically, they were all dying, which was a pretty horrific thing to see. These octopuses traveled here on purpose, decided it was a nice place to hatch their eggs, and then died long, excruciating deaths from the stress of being in water that was too warm, while all of their eggs died as well. Pablo's Sunken Airplane The Staniel K plane wreckage is in the shallow water of Norman's K in the Bahamas. It was used back in the 1980s by Pablo Escobar's crew for transporting cocaine from Colombia to the United States. The plane is in pretty rough shape these days, a World War II-era machine that had been repurposed for drug smuggling. But as you can tell, because it's sitting under several feet of water, things didn't go so well for the plane. It landed short of the runway in 1980, hit a sandbar, and never moved again. Nobody was injured that we know of, and whatever powdery cargo may have been in the hold was promptly removed. However, the plane remains exactly as it was at the time of the crash, a grim reminder of Pablo's reign of terror during the first days of the war on drugs. In case you were hoping to see this fantastic piece of history on your next trip to the Bahamas, think again. As of 2021, not a single commercial flight was going to Norman's K. The only way to get there is by booking a very expensive charter flight. Deep Sea Crown Jelly Scientists have discovered a brand new species of creepy jellyfish. It's not the scariest animal that's ever been found, but it's definitely one of the weirder ones. Plus, it happened recently, about halfway through 2022. The newly discovered species is a deep sea crown jelly, a resident in the midnight zone. That's the part of the ocean where very little light reaches and where the animals are exceptionally odd. What makes this particular jellyfish so weird is its color. Its bell is scarlet red, and it has one tentacle which is significantly longer than all the other ones. It almost looks like a coagulated clump of blood with a bunch of thin worms hanging off of it, just floating through the ocean. 
Researchers with the Monterey Bay Aquarium named the fascinating new species Atolla Reynoldsi, after a man named Jeff Reynolds, one of the volunteers at the aquarium. In case you were wondering, it's not an entirely new genus of jellyfish. It's an Atolla jellyfish, which can be found all throughout the world, but there are only 10 recognized species of the genus. Scientists believe there are more of these creepy, blood-colored jellies hiding in Monterey Bay at depths of up to nearly 11,000 feet, but they haven't been able to officially identify them yet. SOS Signals On April 15, 1972, Lloyd Detmer, the radio operator on the USS Theodore Roosevelt, picked up a very bizarre SOS signal. Through his headphones, Lloyd heard an indistinct, scratchy voice requesting help for the passengers and crew of the Titanic. The voice said it was in the middle of sinking. When Lloyd reported this to his superiors, he was ordered to ignore it because it was most likely a joke. But it didn't feel like a joke to Lloyd. He supposedly checked the military records of SOS signals and discovered that other radio operators had received the exact same signal from someone claiming to be on the Titanic. The signal was picked up in 1918, 1924, 1930, and again every six years. It also appeared that each radio operator had heard the voice of Captain Edward Smith the first and last captain of the Titanic. The last reported SOS signal came in 1996. The Toronto Sun reported that a ship out of Quebec received the same mysterious Titanic SOS, but it supposedly hasn't been picked up since. No one knows if the souls of the victims have finally found peace, or if the ghostly captain has given up all hope. The Titanic Plot When it comes to the sinking of the Titanic, almost everyone unanimously agrees it was an accident. Late in the evening on April 14, 1912, the RMS Titanic plowed into an iceberg and sank. Water flowed into the boat, there was a desperate attempt at escape, and soon the unsinkable ship was lost to the North Atlantic Ocean. Over 1,500 people, more than two-thirds of passengers and crew were killed resulting in one of the worst naval disasters in human history. But what if it wasn't an accident? There is a theory that millionaire banker J.P. Morgan plotted the sinking of the Titanic to kill off rival millionaires. Isidore Strauss, Benjamin Guggenheim, and Jacob Astor were all rivals of the famous banker, and they all died on the ship. Even more curious, J.P. Morgan had made plans to sail on the Titanic, but then cancelled his journey at the very last minute before the boat set sail. While the reason he gave for the cancellation of his trip was an illness, he was reported to be seen a few days later with his mistress, shopping in Europe. By all reports, he seemed in good health and his usual self. This theory is pretty far-fetched, but not entirely impossible. Strauss, Astor, and Guggenheim were supposedly in opposition of the creation of the Federal Reserve, something which made J.P. Morgan incredibly rich. It's possible he needed a way to get rid of them and planned to sink a whole boat just to do it. Message from a doomed passenger A team of researchers is attempting to unravel a mystery from over 100 years ago. They have in their possession a letter which they believe was written by a young girl on the Titanic the evening before it sank. The message was allegedly discovered buried in the sand in the Bay of Fundy in New Brunswick, Canada, and was dated April 13, 1912. It was written in French and signed by Mathilde Lefebvre, who at the time was only 13 years old. Translated into English, the letter says, I'm throwing this bottle into the sea in the middle of the Atlantic. We are due to arrive in New York in a few days. If anyone finds it, tell the Lefebvre family in Leuven. Thanks to historical records, we know this young girl did indeed exist, and she was a real passenger on the Titanic. She was from Pas de Calais, a passenger in third class with her mother and three of her siblings. They were on their way to join Matilda's father, who had emigrated two years earlier. This is all according to the team investigating the letter from the University of Quebec. But is this an authentic letter or just an elaborate hoax? The team studied the chemical composition of the bottle, looked at the cork, scrutinized the paper, and even chemically analyzed the ink. The results of their test showed that everything checks out, meaning the letter and the bottle were made from materials around the time of 1912. But here's where things get really confusing. This isn't the first time a letter has shown up claiming to be from the Titanic. 
The university is now studying the calligraphy itself to see if it matches with the way a 13-year-old French girl would write in 1912. They also felt that the ocean currents would have brought anything from the Titanic to the eastern shores of Canada. Even though the letter appears to be legit, from the ink to the paper, the research team still hasn't been able to prove its authenticity. The Unknown Child Just days after the Titanic sank, a Canadian morgue ship was dispatched to pick up the bodies. The sailors aboard the ship had the grim duty of pulling hundreds of frozen bodies out of the cold and unruly waters. Among the dead plucked out of the Atlantic was an infant boy. John Snow Jr., one of those aboard the morgue ship that day, told the Halifax Herald that the young boy came floating toward him with his face upturned. It was one of the most horrible things he had ever seen. They took the boy back to Halifax, but no one was able to identify him. The baby wasn't on the passenger list, didn't appear to be anyone's missing baby, and nobody knew where he came from. He was just a random baby from the Titanic and his story was so moving that the sailors held a funeral service for him. The child was buried at a cemetery in Halifax. His tombstone is still there today, dedicated to the memory of the unknown child. But just wait! The child is no longer unknown. In 2008, the U.S. Armed Forces DNA Identification Laboratory in Maryland made a positive ID. The boy was Sidney Leslie Goodwin, 19 months old. He was the youngest son of Frederick and Augusta Goodwin, a couple who had been sailing from England with their six children to start a new life in New York. Sadly, none of them made it. The Mystery Ship The Titanic may not have been alone when it sank. A mysterious ship was spotted within view of the rapidly sinking Titanic, but never made any attempt to help. The ship, which was witnessed by multiple survivors, purposely moved away from the scene of the disaster and sailed off into the night as if it hadn't seen a thing. In the months following the horrific tragedy, the SS Californian was accused of being the mystery traitor. Its captain, Stanley Lord, was accused of abandoning the Titanic when it needed help the most. It wouldn't be for decades until the SS California and Stanley Lord were exonerated, but by then, the damage to his reputation had already been done. If it wasn't the SS Californian, then which ship left the Titanic and its passengers to their cruel fate? That's the riddle nobody's ever been able to solve. It wasn't the SS Californian because when the wreckage of the Titanic was found in 1985, it was clear the Californian had been about 20 miles away. There must have been another ship close enough to save some passengers, but unwilling to do anything. That ship's identity has never been found. Do you think the survivors saw a real ship or a ghost ship? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button while you're at it. The Mirage An expert believes they have just discovered what really caused the Titanic to sink. Yes, it hit an iceberg, but now it looks like we might have a reason as to why. On the night of April 14th, nobody saw the iceberg straight ahead of the Titanic until it was too late. Ever since, there has been a lot of speculation as to how the iceberg was missed. How did not a single person spot the giant block of ice until the boat was already directly on it? Tim Malton, a historian from Britain, spent six years digging through survivor accounts of the disaster looking for the truth. What he discovered is that the ship likely sank because of an optical phenomenon called a mirage. This supposed mirage prevented the crew from seeing the iceberg, resulting in over 1,500 deaths. After the disaster happened, there were a lot of excuses thrown around. Some claimed the captain was drunk, some said the rudder was too small, and some said the lack of binoculars was to blame. But Tim debunked all of these. The only logical explanation he could come up with was a mirage. Many survivors claimed it was the clearest night they had ever seen, and yet many other people claimed to see a haze hovering on the horizon. Tim believes that it was indeed an extremely clear night, with visibility upwards of 80 miles straight ahead over the ocean. This intense visibility caused a hazing effect as light scattered through the particles and people gazed into the dizzying distance. Then, because of the thermal inversion caused by the warmer air of the Gulf Stream, pushing the cold Atlantic air down against the surface of the ocean, the conflicting air and the haze created a lens bending the light. This obscured the lookout's vision, 
creating a dense mirage over the iceberg so that nobody saw it coming. The Lost Locket In April of 2022, the Titanic Museum attraction in Branson, Missouri unveiled a lost locket from the Titanic. This small piece of jewelry is worth roughly $250,000. It was initially recovered from the vest pocket of Isidore Strauss when his remains were pulled from the sea. Isidore Strauss was a Jewish-German immigrant and the co-founder of Macy's department store in 1888. He was also once a member of Congress and the first president of the Educational Alliance. He was a huge deal at the turn of the 20th century, one of the very first millionaire philanthropists in the United States. He and his wife Ida Strauss died together on the Titanic after Ida refused to get on one of the lifeboats. She wouldn't leave her husband, saying where he went, she would go also. And so Isidore and Ida met their ends together in the icy waters. After this locket was found in Isidore's vest, it was handed over to the Strauss family and remained in their possession until now. Wreckage in 8K In 2022, the Titanic was rediscovered in a most spectacular way. Just 40 years after the wreckage of the RMS Titanic was first discovered in 1985, we are finally getting a look at the shipwreck in astounding 8K quality. The ocean exploration team with Ocean Gate Expeditions went on a voyage to the bottom of the sea and filmed the Titanic in a way it's never been filmed before. They captured the ghostly wreckage in all its glory. By using the newest cameras and the most advanced technology, they were able to find bits and pieces of the structure that nobody had seen before. For example, they filmed the crane that was used for deploying the massive 15-ton anchor on the deck of the ship. They saw the shackle attached to the main mast before it collapsed. They were able to get sharp details of every single piece of the ship. They saw where the decay had started eating away at the metal. They even found the boilers that hit the ocean floor when the ship snapped in half. Big difference here is the technology. The shipwreck has been filmed plenty of times, but never like this. It's sitting at a depth of 12,415 feet, making visibility almost impossible. But filming the ship in 8K made a huge difference like the difference between trying to put a puzzle together in the dark or with the lights on. The Hero's Whistle Harold Lowe has gone down in history as one of the real heroes of the Titanic disaster. Harold was in charge of lifeboat number 14 and spent every last ounce of energy he had paddling through the frigid waters looking for survivors. Harold was a natural leader. He gathered all the lifeboats together that he could, redistributed the survivors into a flotilla and then used his own lifeboat to search for all the survivors he could find. Sadly, the water was too cold, and just about everyone was already dead. Harold only managed to find four men, and one of them died that night. Still, Harold chased the screams and cries through the black night in desperate search of anyone who might be alive. He was one of only two men who went back to where the ship had sank, hoping to save lives. Recently, Harold Lowe's whistle went up for sale. The whistle is engraved with Lieutenant H.G. Lowe RNR and most definitely belonged to the heroic lieutenant. It had an estimated value of $3,788 on its way to auction, but we don't know what it sold for in the end. We also don't know if this was the whistle Harold used that night as he searched desperately for survivors. It could have been, but nobody knows for sure. Microbes and Decay In 2019, explorers with the DSV limiting factor made five dives to the wreckage of the Titanic and concluded that the ship is in a rapid state of deterioration. The discovery wasn't that surprising since the ship has been submerged for over 100 years. It was a little shocking though to see just how badly damaged the Titanic really is. Patrick LaHaye, one of the expedition members and the owner of Triton Submarines, said it was fascinating to see the Titanic being consumed by the ocean. Divers witnessed the Titanic being returned to its elemental form, every surface of metal in the midst of being rapidly consumed. They also discovered the famous ship is now home to a diverse number of sea creatures and is covered in microbes eating its hull. Sadly, the Titanic is in the final stages of its death. In all likelihood, the Titanic will be little more than some scraps of rust in just a few years. Thanks for watching. 
Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!